This is the Simulation Football League presented by APM Music on YouTube. While they might be called the Nemesis, Seattle's main arch rival in the Pacific Division has always been the Vancouver Legion. The blue, white, and gold have claimed all three previous matchups, but this meeting is a bit different. The Pacific Division title is on the line. Will Seattle claim their second, or will Vancouver deny them? We're about to find out. Good evening, folks. I'm Tyler Falk. Welcome into the Delta Dome here in Vancouver, British Columbia. We have a good one on tap for you tonight. It's been a long and hard season for the hometown Legion, but a win tonight could see them being able to control their own playoff destiny headed into the final week of this regular season. Joining me in the booth tonight is Cameron Duty. Cameron, what an exciting game we have here. Yeah, good evening, Tyler. It's so good to be with you, my friend. Divisional football is fantastic any time of the season, but when it is, you know, a championship is on the line, a divisional championship, uh, and on top of that, you have, you know, these playoff implications coming down the pipe. So exciting. Where are we going to see which team is going to have the upper advantage? We'll find out. I think we need to look at both these defenses. I know we'll talk more about that in a bit. Just excited to be with you, my friend. Well, let's see Seattle in their black helmets, white jerseys, and neon green pants. Kick it off to the Legion in their white helmets, white pants, and blue tops as here we go from the Delta Dome. It's a brilliant return starting off for Nick Lockett as he gets all the way up to the 32-yard line. And that is where the signal caller for the Legion trots out of the field. It's number four, Christian Brown, who unfortunately is top 13 amongst QBs in, or in the SFL. He threw three interceptions last week in the loss to DC. The Vancouver Legion need him to turn things around here this week. Start throwing it, touchdowns rather than interceptions. Mm -hmm, indeed. He will start under center. With three wide receivers, two to his left, one to his right. Late handoff up the middle for Robert Redford, and Redford picks up four yards. And let's meet the rest of the Legion offense. Robert Redford and Sudan Akai are the halfbacks with Matteo Provado and Sawyer Stern at fullback. Brett Killian, Nick Lockett, Kendra Wells, Zora Lunar, and Chris Sunsari are the wideouts with Stephen McMichaels and Cables McGill at tight end. And on the line, it's Brunter Graham, Mike Coverson, Ryan Cadill, and Gregory Winnell. And running nowhere, getting stood up at the line of scrimmage is the fullback Provano. That brings up third down. Yeah, big third down here already. Kind of interesting to see them to go with Provado. Usually they like to use him in short yardage situations. Uh, instead, you see the result there, and they're about forced to pass here. Third down here for, for Vancouver. Seattle send four. Brown with plenty of time. Now unloading near side. Caught inside the 35-yard line. A lightning strike from Christian Brown to Stephen McMichaels. Stephen McMichaels has a tendency to come up with the big catch. And when he does, it usually takes place in situations such as this. His average is about 12 yards per catch he has 16 receptions coming into today's game that puts him over 200 yards maybe you don't see him often but when you do he's usually coming up with a big play for his team 32 yards for mcmichaels to get to the seattle 32 yard line bk12 brett killian the man in motion toward the near side empty backfield here for brown Five-man rush for Seattle. Brown has time. Unloads, looking for Kendra Wells, and the ball is jarred out of her hands. Incomplete. The hit was from TJ Frosty. The free safety, and let's meet the rest of this Seattle defense. Draco Young, James Ramos, Connor O'Shaughnessy, Sean Parent, and Aaron Stein out of the defensive lineman with Sable Cannon, Aaron Gooden, and Messiah Citrion at linebacker. Daniel Valentine, Amara Bryant Jr., and Ricky Robinson are the corners with Doug Day and Bryant James at safety alongside G.G. Frosty at three safety. Again, this is the Pacific Division title on the line. Swing pass near side, Redford. Tries to get inside the 30 and does. They'll say he picked up four yards. And it's quite simple here, Cameron. A win for Seattle clinches the division for the folks in Seattle. But if Vancouver win, they control their own destiny. And a win next week as well could see them 
clinch and reclaim the Pacific title for themselves after last season it went to Seattle. Blitz coming, Brown rolling and decides to run with it. He has open space and he picks up the first down inside the 20 yard line. A fantastic heads up play from CD4. Yeah, good job indeed right there of Brown. Something we don't see him do all the time, of course, is rolling out of the pocket to run. But again, a good job by a tough Seattle defense locking down all the receivers downfield. So Brown takes it into his own hands and picks up the first down. A great heads-up play. And you know there's going to be some nerves attached to this, obviously, what they're playing for tonight. The adrenaline is pumping. We'll see them settle down, and uh, and, and we should see some good football here. Blitz came from the outside, but Vancouver went straight up the gut with Provado, who picks up three yards on first down. Really interesting note. We talk about this three-headed rushing tandem for Vancouver with Robert Redford, who is leading the way. An interesting note to this point, Redford does not have a touchdown this entire season. Does he get it tonight, or do they go back to the fullback when they get to the end zone? Gets the call and tries to spin inside, but great heads-up awareness from Sabo Cannon, the outside linebacker who gets in behind the line. It's a tackle for loss for Cannon. Good defensive penetration that time by Seattle. That is going to be important. I think these two ground games for both of these teams are going to uh, be a big factor in the outcome of this game. Empty backfield. Brown has to get rid of it. Finds Brett Killian, who just walks in the end zone. Touchdown, Vancouver. You can't draw it up much better than that. That is a fantastic offensive play right there. A great play design. You had Daniel Valentine who was coming over the cornerback there for Seattle who was trying to come in and make a big pick and instead kind of misjudged it there. And Killian doing a good job as always coming up with the TD when they need it most. And Vancouver strikes first. It's a double-edged sword when you go for the ball as Valentine did, either you're taking it back to the house or as Brett Killian did, he takes it in for six and chance to win. We'll just boot home the extra point in Vancouver, take an early seven to nothing lead and take three minutes off the clock to begin the ball game. Uh, you couldn't ask for much more of a, a more productive drive. A, a great job by Vancouver coming out, and we've talked about Brown and some of the troubles he's had with the touchdown-to-interception ratio, but that was just great command all the way down the field by the QB. A great start to this game. He was three of four throwing the football, and now his counterpart on the other sideline will have a chance to see what he can do. It's Ty Patak who leads the way, and unfortunately for him, Last week, he broke an 11-game streak with at least one touchdown in each game. He's looking to get back on another streak here tonight. Now down by 70, begin matters here. What does Seattle have in their bag of tricks? We know how much that tie attack loves to roll out and run with the football. Be on watch for what he decides to do tonight as he rolls out and fires across his body and finds an open receiver beyond the 40-yard line, maybe getting up to the 45-yard line. It's the wide receiver, Gus Scott. Uh, glad we get to take a look at this replay. A nice roll out here by Patak. We see him do that often. And uh, usually coming back across to the middle of the field, and he has Scott right there in his sights. Um, a good job by Lopez to bring him down. But really, that's kind of their bread and butter. They like to go out of that formation, and usually it pays pretty good dividends for him. So a nice 18-yard catch for Scott gets Seattle second play of the drive up to their own 45, and this time they will run. It's Baloo Scott who tries and hurdles a defender up to the right-hand side. She picks up five yards, and let's introduce you to the rest of that Seattle offense. We've just mentioned type attack the quarterback, and Baloo Scott is the halfback alongside J.W. Do Doyle, also at halfback. Dean Jackson is the fullback with John Fullerton, Gus Scott, Justice Blackwell, Ryan Orlovsky, and Kenny Slider Jr. at wideout. Holly Truth and Ben Harrison are the tight ends with Sean Sullivan, Will Stevens, Matty Mack, and Kobe Beef on the line. From the midfield logo comes Seattle on second down. Attack will look to throw, four-man rush, tries to go over the middle. It is hot, just short of the line to gain for Fullerton, a gain of four and a half and it's third down. 
I'll be interested to see who they decide to probably give this football to. You know, third and inches, they're going to run it. They, as well, have a great backfield with Baloo Scott, as we mentioned, and J.W. Duell, who they like to look to in these situations, the uh, the new man over from Florida this season. Love running the football to Seattle, but they go only average about only a, under 100 yards a game, but it won't matter here as Scott easily picks up the first down behind a whole host of her friends from the offensive line. A, a very good play design. I like that running right as they did. And, of course, you mentioned that offensive line completely dominating in the trenches and giving Scott plenty of lanes to choose from to run through. Split backfield now from the 38-and-a-half-yard line. Patak under pressure, rolling. Now looking to fire. Caught again inside the 30-yard line, down near the 26. Gus Scott has another one. Now that may look business as usual as we talked about that rollout. We've already seen it once today. Patak going back and looking for Scott again across the middle. But that was no easy catch, I can assure you. They just made it look that way. Completely blanketed was Gus Scott and good concentration to reel that one in. These two have a great chemistry and very hard to lock down. Scott is second of the team in receptions coming into tonight's game with 34. Also second the team in yards with 547 receiving yards as the run outside goes for two. Again, Blue Scott on the call. I like the variation in the playbook right now. They are very comfortable in going past one minute and run the next, trying to keep Vancouver on their heels. It's important for Seattle here to be able to respond with an effective drive. And, and right now with what I'm seeing, they're doing a really good job. Five down linemen to try and counter this heavy set and just weaving their way through the tackles is J.W. Doyle, who the former Floridian makes the, his bread and butter, makes his money fighting off defenders left, right, and center. Yeah, you said it exactly, Tyler. That is what this guy loves. He thrives on contact, and, and he's just one of those athletes that the more you hit him, the better he gets. So you don't think you're going to stop him just because there's a little contact. No, he keeps going like the Energizer Bunny. Third down, middle, caught near the five-yard line. Ryan Orlovsky, first and goal, Seattle. I could go on and on about just how good this Seattle offense is. The wideouts, um, so many weapons right here for top attack to choose from. Orlovsky being one of them. 16 receptions and now uh, well over 200 yards in receiving. Three touchdowns on the season. And again, a 14.7 average on reception. So again, they like to look to him uh, in the, uh, the deeper thrown areas and he always delivers. 20% of Orlovsky's catches go for scores and that's a wide open end zone touchdown Pauly Truth finishes off the drive and Seattle come right down the field and score one for themselves and how can we talk about wide outs without mentioning Pauly Truth the fact is I just didn't have a chance to get to that point how in the world can we go without mentioning him look at this for one you know the big man he is a great route runner for his size and great speed as well uh, he's very uh, commandeering there on the line he can uh, you know ward off defenders that time he literally was unscathed somehow unguarded in the corner of the end zone and a great job fifth touchdown on the season when you're spoiled for choice for wide receiving targets, it's quite simple for Type Attack, who goes five for five on a near four minute drive to score for Seattle. It is seven to seven. If you're new to the Simulation Football League, welcome. The SFL is football for everyone. Get off the sideline and start your player today by joining our Discord server at simulationfl.net. Click the Join the Community button and begin your career or just to meet the stars of the SFL on and off the field. It's never too late to get involved. And, and one thing, Tyler. I'm sorry, go ahead, bud. I was just going to say, two opening drives, two opening scores. Your point yeah. now. Yeah, well, exactly what you were going to say right now. You know, um, they, they're, they're running a marathon, and they both are at a dead sprint, and they're completely tied at the moment with – this pace going down the field being able to score it's been great from both these teams so far it's coming brown gonna look over the middle and it's nearly hauled in looking for mcmichaels but another bone crunching hit from one of the 
Seattle DBs jars it free. The Seattle defense is not one to mess with. They are very good, and when you take a look at their stats on the season, uh, they rank among the top 10 in average points allowed per game, so it's hard to score on them as well. Just 21 points they're giving up on average in a game. After going empty in the last play, they try and put two backs in the backfield, maybe a couple extra blocks, and it doesn't matter. Robert Redford got the pass out of the backfield, but Amar Bryant Jr. says, you're going nowhere. Oh, well, we've talked about Amar Bryant and his season that he's been having. Um, one of many who are having a very good year thus far. And right there, another tackle that should be about 34 or so on the season. He's also got a couple INTs. Blade Blitz, Brown having to roll out of the pocket, unloading over the middle, cut, Brad Killian, Mr. Reliable, first down, Legion. So Seattle has Scott and Vancouver has Brett Killian, and that is what you see, the two quarterbacks. They just have these players that they love to go to that can bail them out of a tight situation when they need the big play. And, and the comfort between both these quarterbacks with their respective targets is on display tonight. And both uh, Scott and Killian now for Vancouver rising to the challenge. Quickly, Vancouver trying to test the air here in this one as they try and go underneath. Incomplete, Killian again the intended target. This time he was surrounded by a cloud of nemesis. Yeah, not a not one of the best decisions there for Brown to throw into that coverage. Let's mention Seattle's defense. They do a fantastic job of snagging footballs out of the air. They're led by Doug Day, four INTs on the season, two of them being for uh, you know, a, a big returns there, touchdowns as well, two touchdowns on the season for Doug Day. So, uh, you know, got to be very careful with your choices here. And then now on the left side, they go into pitch play that way. Redford trying to break out of a tackle. He gets one, but Bryant again there on the stop. That'll bring up third down for Vancouver. This is the first time that we have been able to see this Seattle defense really stiffen up this entire game. Honestly, both defenses looked a little bit too loose and a little bit too flimsy on the opening drives, but now you're starting to see a little bit of muscle here out of this Nemesis defense. It's coming. Brown just steps up and takes off, and he slides, but he's short of the line to gain by two. He felt the pressure coming from the outside, so instead of taking a sack, he potentially gives his team a chance to maybe go for it here. Yeah, indeed, it looks as if they may decide to punt this one away, but talk about the awareness that he's had two times in this game already to bail out of danger. It'll pay off for sure as this game goes along. Maybe too early in the ball game for Andy Hamilton to try and get tricky with us. Instead, it's a punt. And Seattle will return it back up to the 17-yard line. A net punt return there of about five for John Fullerton. And that is where Vancouver will take over. So we've had two big offensive series, and now the defense of Seattle, they, they kind of draw first blood, if you will, after um, you know tying it up at seven. And now they have an opportunity to give their offense a chance to maybe put some points on the board and pull ahead. So the attack goes under center. Eight men in the defensive box here for Vancouver. Blitz coming. Attack has to get rid of it. He finds Holy Truth over the middle. And that's a good gainer all the way past the 35-yard line. Yeah, and this guy right here, you don't want to mess with Polly Truth. I mean, it's tough to defend on him. I mentioned it earlier about just how good he is at route running. But look at this. Kind of surprised the cushion that they gave him because even when he is one-on-one -on -one with defenders and they are completely blanketing him, he does have the height and the strength to bring the football down. So the fact that they gave him a cushion like that, a little surprising, and Patak just uh, took advantage of it completely. Gain of 21 here for the Seattle Nemesis. Another drive gets going rather quickly. Pass, and that's the first incompletion for Patak. He was looking for Fullerton, but Fullerton was blanketed in coverage. And let's meet that Vancouver defense. Achilles, Papatonis, Bobo Cadell, Lindsey Theismann, Gerald Giudicesi, and Michael Ruri are the defensive linemen with Marquise Reed and DJ Woods and Josh Farnsey at linebacker. Emmanuel Blackman, Zach Lane, Michael Lister, and Will Stern are the corners with Drew Hamilton, J.J. Winfield, and Mark Lopez at safety. Patak will throw again, and this time it's nearly taken away as Farnsey gets in the way of the pass. 
Yeah, Farnsey got handsy with that one there and just about had a, an important INT. It would have been his third on the season. But nevertheless, that does force them into a tough third down here, uh, certainly having to, to pick up big yardage on one play. And you hear the crowd come to their feet. More to be seen on this play. Four wide receivers here for Patak in the gun. Just takes up the run, but he is planted into the turf by Rory. Fourth down, Seattle will punt. Yeah, all 6'1", 290 pounds of Michael Rory bearing down on top attack. And, and he thought he was going to be able to, again, escape out of there, as we've seen him roll out and do a couple of times. Rory said, no, I'm not having any of it, and completely puts an end to that drive. So now Vancouver's defense rising up to the occasion here. First sack of the ball game, fourth sack of the season for Rory, and it's a crucial one. That sees another punt. Two offensive drives, two defensive stands. Back-to-back -back partner, as we maybe alluded to, as we close out here this first quarter. It will remain 7-7 after the pseudo Nakai return to the 33. It's a good one here in the Pacific Northwest. Strap yourselves in. Three more quarters to go here from the Delta Dome in Vancouver. Stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. Back in the Delta Dome, Tyler Falk alongside camera duty here in the booth. A special shout out and thanks to James Walters and Ron Haynes and the stat struck and will be receiving periodic updates from the game going on in Denver, Colorado between the Denver Nightwings and Motor City V8. We have updates from us full headquarters from Cameron Irvine. As we begin the second quarter, handoff, Robert Redford toward the near side. Only gains three. He's only averaging just over three yards a carry on the season. It's not like Redford to be this sluggish in in his seasons past, but with the recent changes to how this Vancouver offense works, it's been a tough struggle to get the run game going at times, though they are averaging close to 120 yards a game rushing. Pass right side. It looked like it just got launched out of Christian Brown's hands before he had a, even a second to think about throwing it. That's for sure. He had pressure breathing down his neck, and he just had to make a ill-timed throw, and it just sailed over the head of the intended target there. So lucky that that's all that came of that because I almost expected a sack. A sack excuse me. Third and seven now here for Vancouver. Brown under center with four wide receivers. Five-man rush. Brown looking to throw. It's tipped up in the air and incomplete. Doug Day got there with his hands up in the air, knocking the pass aside. And it's back-to-back -back punts for Vancouver. It's really interesting. As you mentioned, Tyler, we talked about the defense. Which defense was going to be able to rise to the occasion here? We know that both of these teams of you know, rely on the offense and the weapons that they have, but they also have very tough, stern defenses. Right now, both of them again playing uh, on the equal playing field. Nobody with the upper hand. And turn back to the 29 yard line from Fullerton is a pretty decent one. Seattle averaged one of the best average starting field positions in the league, close to around the 30 yard line on average through each and every single game. How can they turn that into points? I think that, you know, although the rushing attack isn't maybe the strong suit, um, I think you've got to look to the ground game here. I think that it is important to get J.W. Doyle in, involved. Of course, Baloo Scott. Those two, if you get them rolling, that's going to pay in dividends for a passing game that already looks good, but that'll just make them that much better and get Vancouver a little off kilter, if you will. Back will look to throw again. Short drop looking near side on the out route. Turning up field is Lofsky, and he only gains two. Again, what can you say? This Vancouver defense locking down some of these, these wide outs here along the flats and not letting them really get any extra yards. We saw them even on the, uh, the pitch out that they were doing with the halfbacks. They're just stopping them in their tracks. Nowhere to run, really. 
Roll out near side from attack. It's oh. tipped up in the line. A huge heads up play from the Greek nightmare, Achilles Papatonis. Yeah, Papatonis, you know, he is a six foot five, the second tallest man on this defensive front, Bobo Caudill coming in at six seven. But he used every bit of that six foot five frame to get up there and bat that one down with those big paws. A great job. That's what you love to see out of your defensive unit. Attack will now go empty backfield here on third down. Looking to throw, looking middle, a little bit of miscommunication, incomplete. Got Scott the intended target, and now we've had four, we'll have four straight punts between these two teams. Yeah, they literally come out guns blazing. They they both go down the field on their opening drives, and they get get the quick touchdowns. But since then, these defenses have really settled in and took this game over, and it's really been a dogfight. With both teams knowing what is on the line, the Pacific Division title, the last division up for grabs here in season 22 of the SFL. As Nakai returns to the 30-yard line, out comes Vancouver's offense once more. They went down the field on their opening drive to score a touchdown. It was a brilliant pass to Brett Kellyan, but now things have kind of turned to center. Uh, Christian Brown was three of four on that opening drive. He now sits at five of 10, which is right around his average in terms of com completion percentage throughout the entire season. He's at 50% right now, his average is at 51 throughout the entirety of season 22 as Brown will look to throw again, looking double coverage to Brett Killian, who climbs the ladder and brings it down for a first down. Yeah, I had to go over top two defenders as we take a look at the replay, I mean, just a great job right there. Great athleticism. Good job of Brown also threading the needle. And that's just being comfortable with your wide out and knowing that they're going to be able to come up, deliver a big reception, even in traffic. Achillian doing a good job in this game. He's got some hops. He jumped up the air, didn't even put his hands up. His hands were down by his hips, and somehow he caught that pass over the shoulder pads of the defender in front of him. EK12 got hops. 7-7 seven, seven our score line here, closing on the eight minute mark of the second quarter. Handoff or pitch play to Nakai, nothing doing. Amar Bryant Jr. with another stop today. He has just been racing all over that side of the field. Yeah, nobody needs to tell that guy that playoff football is on the line here. He needs no reminder the way that he's playing. There have been a couple of defensive players out there for Seattle that has done a nice job today. Um, really anchoring this defensive unit and keeping Vancouver at bay for the time being. Third total tackle on the game for Amar. Three wide here for Brown. Five-man rush, flip out right side. Redford oh. cannot escape the defender. He gains maybe a couple on the play. And it's another third down here for the Legion. And, and that's Matthias Citrion there with a great open field tackle. Again, you know, complete ball hawks out here um, in Vancouver tonight. Wherever the football goes, they're sure to be right there to slow them down. Rulers converted on three third downs in the first drive, but ever since then, they're one of four, and they are now going to be one of five since that opening drive. Brown was trying to find Lockett. Incomplete pass, however. And Vancouver will punt again. It's that pressure that we talked about how, you know, things started out so smoothly there for Vancouver and, and this offense. Well, it's the pressure that they are getting on their quarterback, Christian Brown, that has made all the difference. Even if they're not hitting him and getting him down to the turf, they're making him have to get rid of that football even quicker. And quarterback nor receiver has been prepared. Here comes the return, and it almost looked like a pretty good one for Fullerton. He nearly got out of that last tackle. It does bring up the 20-yard line. Take a look at what these two teams' offenses have been able to do today, and besides the opening drive, it really hasn't been that much. Most of those yards and stats come from their opening drives. Yeah, and both of these units, they're relatively step-for-step. Step. As I mentioned, it's, it's interesting. I alluded to the analogy of a, a foot race right now, but... Uh, somebody's got to pull out uh, ahead of in this race, but at the moment, both teams trying to find that perfect combination and, and nothing doing right now. 
who will unlock this game. Blue Scott on the call, near side, picking up three. Marquise Reed with the tackle, and sees these little plays that help get drives going, and we really haven't seen that much, so it's a good sign of life from Seattle. It is. Uh, an interesting point to make, turnovers. We really haven't seen anything dangerous. We've seen a couple of wayward passes that's gave us maybe a, a, a pause or two to be concerned, but really it's been a, a clean game. It could come down to which defense produces turnovers in this game. Scott, Scott gets the pass left side, and Marquise Reed there again to say hello. Only a two-yard gain from Scott. Now it's third down. It's a product of the type of game and the situation with which we're facing. You know, whoever wins controls the destiny in the division, and the fact is so much going on, the inner turmoil, the struggles in the trenches and, and you know, the coaching chess game. Uh, it's making for some really intense football tonight, and I love it. It's coming, but oh. had to escape the tackle, and now oh, he goes goodness. forward and picks up a first down. True athleticism from type attack to shrug off the nightmare and pick up the first down yards needed. And just when it looked like Patak was done, I mean, completely finished on the play, he eludes the sack. And again, great awareness to run straight up field. He had great awareness of where the marker was and just how much he needed to get for the first. And that's huge, especially if they can convert this into a scoring drive. Keep an eye on that play right there and what a difference it could make in tonight's game for this team. That's the first third down conversion for Seattle since the opening drive. Now can they string a few together? Pass, middle, cut, holy truth! First down, a gain of 11 as he himself climbs into the heavens to snag that catch. I love watching Polly Truth play. I love, as I mentioned, the physicality, the guy with his size and his strength. Obviously, he is not afraid to take, you know, contact 6'6", 250 pounds, and just uh, a force to be reckoned with. And now you see the momentum from that first down of Patax, how it's feeding over. Reed with the first attempted tackle allows for a little bit of extra help to come his way. And that is a tackle right at the line of scrimmage. Credit Will Stern in on the tackle. That'll bring up second and 10. Rolling right, passing cross middle, and Truth is there. That's a gain of about five. He had Drew Hamilton draped all over him from behind to bring him down. Yeah, truly, Patak turned nothing into something on that play. It quartered, you know, on both sides. He just had to get rid of the football. He looks for Polly Truth, and, you know, as great quarterback tight end combinations go or receiver combinations go, you see the result. Oh, that's a wayward pass. So are they going to say they're going to call pass interference on this? On, I believe that is going to be on Vancouver. It is. Mm. I didn't quite see what happened, but they're going to call Mark Lopez for pass interference. Let's take a look. Uh, they're going to they're going to say I guess that he impeded right there on the route of the of the pass and of course the receiver coming over. So, yeah, kind of interesting, an interesting call right there. Really uh, a very strict call, I guess if you put it that way. That could win either way, honestly. Say Lopez did step right in the way of the receiver, which is an oh no. And so Patak will roll again and looking to fire middle hot inside a 15 down to around the 11 yard line. It is John Fullerton who puts Seattle back in the red zone. And again, we talk about top attack, avoiding the sack that would have surely put an end to the drive. And now they have reeled off some great plays, great receptions to Polly Truth. And now that one to Fullerton. Of course, they had the big P.I. penalty there that has helped them. It has changed things dramatically for this team. And it was just the spark that this offense needed. And Lopez is there. He's just not able to find the football in time. He's able to find the receiver in the target right yeah. away. Just maybe a half second away from turning around and finding that football is... The run goes to the right-hand side, and Stern, along with Hamilton, bring down Baloo Scott after only a gain of one. 
And, you know, discouraging as it may be to get the big, you know, pass interference call on the defense there for Vancouver, they did a nice job today keeping Seattle at bay, and they can still come away with a moral victory here, honestly, if they can keep them out of the end zone. That is the next priority here. Force them into a field goal attempt rather than them taking it to the house for six. Four straight completions for Patak, and it's going to try and go to the air again. Looking left side into coverage, incomplete. Looking for Gus Scott, excellent coverage there on the outside, and that brings up third down. Yeah, and I believe that was Blackman. Yeah, Emmanuel Blackman coming over, and you really don't play that much cleaner. That was just good defense, getting to the point of the football at the exact time to deflect the pass away from the intended target. That's how you do it, and now a huge third down coming up. Attack will be alone in the gun. Four wide receivers and Pauly Truth, the tight end, on the line. This is perfect and prime opportunity for Truth, the team's leading receiver. As Attack rolling left side, double coverage, and it's just incomplete. Looking for his receiver open in the end zone and couldn't connect. And it will result in a field goal opportunity for Seattle. So the Vancouver defense does their job. They rise up. They keep them out of the end zone with some really clean defensive play bringing up this field goal attempt. Talon trots Victor Ironleg for the field goal. Snap spot kick is up. And now Ironleg has now gone seven straight games without a missed field goal. And Seattle take their first lead of the game it's now 10 to 7 liking the game so far smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already the sfl produces over 400 events a year there is no one else that gives you more football don't miss a minute of sfl or sflm action and help the channel grow through your support we're rolling again here as nick lockett will take the kickoff from his own end zone looking right side there's a flag on the play he gets beyond the 30 yard line well let's check out the laundry again it's going to be a face mask an incidental face mask which means the only game about five yards so vancouver will be on their own 38. yeah as you said just five yards there kind of interesting we had a really clean game and now we've We've got a little bit of extracurricular physicality there that's resulted in a couple of yellow hankies. So it's just it's just that aggression and that attrition in this game, the adrenaline pumping in. Three wide receivers here for Vancouver, a pitch play near side. Two Redford goes nowhere. Doug Day in on the tackle behind the line. It'll be a loss of one. Back to the pressure we keep talking about on Christian Brown, Cameron. Christian Brown has is one of the least sacked quarterbacks in the league. He's only been sacked nine times, which is third best in the league. But it's that pressure which has forced 19 interceptions this season, which has really bit Vancouver in the backside. And now we'll see what they can do here. They try and be a little bit more conservative with a run up the middle from Nakai, who gains that yard back in three more. Yeah, you're exactly right, Tyler. The fact. It goes to show you that it, while it's great to definitely get the quarterback down on the ground, just that turning up the volume, turning up the heat, the notch, if you will, just making things a little more uncomfortable for the quarterback, what it can do messes with their thought process, uh, the less time to react to a incoming defender, and you see the result of it. This offense, pretty good. Drop from Brown, he just overbailed it, is. and here comes the return, here for Amar Bryant Jr. inside the 40-yard line, there is a flag, it is going to be a block in the back call on the return, so it negates the return, but Seattle forced that turnover and that pressure, there was only three defenders trying to get after Brown, but it was enough to force the airmail. Yeah, it's exactly what I was I was getting ready to say, and you called it, Tyler. They were bringing the pressure again. We've seen it coming. This offense is a good offense, but when you pressure your quarterback like that, you know, that INT bug is bad to strike. We 
we reach the two minute warning. Seattle have a chance to drive and put up some more points. They currently lead 10 to seven here in the Delta Dome in Vancouver. You're watching the SFL on YouTube. Two minutes to play here in week 13. In this first half. Seattle up by three, looking to add more points on before we head to half time as Blue Scott gets the give left side. Gains seven before Lopez can bring her down. Well, it goes without saying, but it's it's clearly obvious how important this drive can be to Seattle. The defensive output that we've seen by both of these teams, it's been tough to score. It's been tough to put up points. If Seattle can use this last minute 37 seconds to their advantage and get some more points, um, they got to be feeling really good about their chances, especially considering how their defense has been playing. Three tight ends on the field for Seattle. They'll try and pitch left side, but a beautiful read on the play is from Josh Farnsey. Gets to J.W. Doyle. It's a loss of three. Well, Farnsey is one of the leading tacklers on this team, and that is a prime example of why as we see them go hurry up here. Attack will roll and fire left side. It is caught, but there he is again. Josh Farnsey <laughs> stops Harrison before the line to gain, makes two clutch tackles, and Seattle will punt. Well, it is clutch, the perfect word right there, Tyler. The fact that he literally took that drive into his own, his own hands with two open field tackles. And now, as I mentioned, they got to, instead of go for a score, they got to punt the ball away. Great job. David Roish, active to pump this one away, keeps his eye on the play clock, waiting until the very last possible second to milk as much clock of this away. Then Hoover try and block, and they're unable to. And this is an excellent punt from Roish, who comes in undrafted as a rookie and pins Vancouver near their own 10-yard line. They'll mark it out at the 13. Beautiful punt from the rookie. Yeah, definitely. Uh, they really did a a good job in picking this guy up because he is very good at, at cornering their opponents deep on their side of the field. So now here comes Christian Brown reeling from his 20th interception on the season. They have 25 seconds to march down the field and Seattle, meanwhile, will get the ball back to start the second half. And so you got... and just run out the rest of this clock. A run right side for Redford. Gains only maybe a couple. And then... But I... That a, a look or two down the field just to strike to see what's down there, if they can get any kind of traction. But I expect them to be rather conservative here. And uh, Redford through the middle. Getting a couple more yards, and this time there will be no timeout, and we'll head into the halftime. Here as Seattle up by three points. It's 10-7, to seven. and what a game we've got going here, Cameron Duty. Let's start talking about what these two teams have got to do to come out with the win here tonight, because Seattle right now, as it stands, through 20 minutes of play, look like they might claim the Pacific Division title for themselves. Yeah, it does look that way. I think that we have to focus squarely on these defensive on units. Defensive unit. As much as I think this offense uh, of both sides of the ball are going to have highlights in this game, no doubt, it's the control that both the Nemesis defense and the Vancouver defense has shown throughout this game. I think that you know turnovers could be a big factor here. We haven't seen any kind of sloppy play. Which defense at the at the end of this game comes up with the big stop. Is it going to be a turnover? Is it going to be a, a, a turnover on downs on fourth down? I don't know. I just feel like this is a defensive minded game. I'm not seeing enough of the offense yet to say that this is going to turn into a shootout. I'm expecting a little more of the same out of these units. Killian, your player of the half so far. So looking back to the Legion's home field, the Delta Dome is hosted by Delta Flair. Startup company building video games and an economic solution for blockchain compatibility. After Knox and Get Ready for their premier title, Valor Rising Quest, 
for the seven. The red side and Delta player got TG for the ten. And we are back underway here from Vancouver. It's a G kickoff to start off. Half chance to win, and Fullerton will just take an E deep back in his own end zone. That's where Seattle will start this next possession. To kind of add to that point there, Tyler, that I, I was mentioning, you've got, uh, you know, Doug Day for Seattle, who, you know, has so many INTs on the season. Then for Vancouver, you've got Mark Lopez out there now, who is a complete ball hog as well. I just expect these quarterbacks, with the pressure getting to them, somebody's going to throw the costly INT before it's over. Look at the pressure, Tyler. Pass middle. It is caught by Truth near the 30-yard line. It's a gain of nine. And it's a good start to the drive for the nemesis. It definitely is. And now one way to counteract all of that pressure that you're seeing is the middle throws. Of course, we know that's where Polly Truth likes to reside. And that's, that's a, just a great play, great awareness there to get out of there with some positive yards. Heavy look, run, right side. Scott finds an open hole, and she picks up the first down to the 38-yard line, a gain of about nine. Yeah, a good job going back to the ground game. As we mentioned, these two teams, they like to rely on the passing game. We don't see them go to the ground quite as much, but the fact is they give it to Blue Scott there. She is known to break a, a good run, uh, you know, a, at least – couple times during a game and and you're seeing it right there playing up big when it matters attack will roll near side and just has to get rid of it and takes a shot Doyle is the recipient of the pass who gains two yards but attack one of the most sack quarterbacks in this league takes another tough hit one of the reasons that he is the most sacked quarterback is because of how long he likes to hold that football. We've seen it when he was able to escape the sack back in the second quarter. He likes to hold on to it just as long as he can. Sometimes it gets him in trouble. Sometimes he's able to get out of there just in time. Attack, looking for truth and double oh. coverage. Caught near the 40-yard line of Vancouver. And Vancouver sent the blitz, but they left truth with too much space. Well, you know what they say about the blitz. You live by it and you die by it. And at that point, they were just about to get home to attack, but you got Polly Truth out there, and it literally looked like he took that football away from two Vancouver defenders that was in the area wanting to make the big turnover. Great job, of course. Brand new set of downs here for the nemesis as attack will roll again. Firing toward the middle of the field. It is caught inside the 30 down to around the 26 yard line as Ben Harrison pulls that one in. That classic rollout that we see and, and we'll see the route on that end here by Harrison. A good job of getting open and beating his coverage there off the line. Something we haven't seen many receivers be able to do in this game tonight. But again, those rollouts seem to work so well for them and you see the consistency Pataki, Ty Patak has shown today. Linebacker shifting over, eight men in the box here, trying to slow down this rushing attack for Seattle and Par does it again, Farnsey does it again. It's a loss of one and he has been the stopgap for Vancouver in the run game. Yeah, where have we seen this story before, right? <laughs> Another tackle for Farnsey, his seventh of the game. Only two behind leading tackler Mark Lopez here tonight. But attack will roll again. Again, middle, and it's picked oh. up! A diving Mark Lopez turns the ball over inside the red zone. Oh, that was huge. We said it was coming. Uh, we alluded to it. Uh, these defenses are going to be able to force these quarterbacks at some point in time in this game to come up with a... A crucial mistake and and there it is let's also credit Farnsey for the fact that it, the plays before he was getting a lot of pressure crowding the line then those players on this Vancouver front was getting home to top attack and then there you see the ill-advised throw that Mark Lopez is able to take advantage of sixth interception on the season for Mark Lopez as a pitch play for Robert Redford goes near side he picks up five yards and maybe this is the spark that gets the Vancouver offense hovering again because 
at times this season, partner, they seem to slow down a little bit in the middle part of the game, and that can also be contributed to the slow middle part of this season. They need to turn it on here late on this season, just like they did last season. They won three games back to back to back to get into the postseason. They have to win two games here to control their fate, control their destiny to make the playoffs this season. Hand off up the middle, meanwhile, goes for another couple yards, bringing up third and manageable. You're exactly right with what you mentioned. We go back to week seven, for example, and then they had the two straight losses to Fort Worth and then Florida. They then reel off two wins against Los Angeles and Indianapolis and then lose again last week to D.C. So we've seen it's been kind of a roller coaster of progression for Vancouver. But right now, you're right. They need to play, you know, you know, a scale of one to ten. They need to be playing at an 11 right now, keeping their foot on the throttle. And they need to. Uh, for the duration of this season, heading into uh, the postseason, potentially. It's a shovel pass up the middle and pushing his way forward is Mateo Provano. Well, don't you love that? I mean, you just love the, the guts, the grit that comes from a player like Matteo Provado, who, as we mentioned, they split a lot of time in the backfield between Sudo and Redford. So taking advantage of every carry that he gets, that was a beautiful play. I formation now on first down. You have pitch play for Redford near side. He just couldn't get outside quick enough. But he is corralled by Bryant James after only a gain of one. When you take a look at that graphic on the screen, the third down efficiency and how well both of these teams have done. If Seattle can get Vancouver off the field and stop them from being able to take advantage of that interception, that is a critical moment in this football game, I do believe. Under five and a half to play in the third quarter. Vancouver only down by three. Three wide, it'll be a handoff Ooh. up the middle for Redford and Redford gets blown up after a gain of three by Doug Day. That was a, a really interesting call. It looked, I was looking at Killian the whole way, thinking he was going in motion and they were going to look his direction down the field. Instead, they kind of fool us with the handoff. Well, everybody but Seattle, who did a good job of containing that one. It's coming. Brown there doesn't see Dog Day. The nemesis, nemesis man comes away. The dreaded one with a sack, and Vancouver will have to punt. And that is number two on the season by Doug Day. Really interesting. I referenced both of these players, Mark Lopez for Vancouver and Doug Day for Seattle, and how I felt like they would have to have big second halves. They both have came up huge for their team. That time, Doug Day coming in around the edge, applying the pressure, and Brown had no idea that he was even in his perimeter. When you sack Christian Brown, take a lock of grass. It's a very rare feat to do here this season. It's only the 10th sack on Christian Brown this season. Here's a good look in return here from Fullerton as he breaks out of a couple tackles. Gets up to the 45 yard line of Vancouver. Excellent starting field position for Seattle on their upcoming drive. The 2024 SFL convention is headed to South Shore Harbor Resort in League City, Texas, just south of Houston, July 12th through the 14th. Featuring live games, flag football, a golf tournament, tailgate, pool party, and more. For all the convention details, visit simulationfl.net slash news slash convention to reserve your room, see the event schedule, and so much more. First and 10 now from just inside the 45-yard line of Vancouver comes the Seattle offense. Cornerback blitz, pass right side, caught, and turning up field and lowering the shoulder, trying to look for extra yards is Dean Jackson, the fullback. Yeah, and... You know, that's another name that we don't hear of all the time, but Dean Jackson doing a very good job. As a matter of fact, um, that is reception number 10 on the season for Dean Jackson. So when he does get a chance to touch the football, you know, it's usually in a play such as that, and he makes the most of every possession. A good job, a new set of downs here for Seattle and in the Vancouver territory easily. For the 33, it was a 12-yard pickup. Now Patak looking little, oh. and it's taken away! Oh my goodness, another spectacular! 
spectacular interception here for Vancouver. Marquise Reed comes up with the death-defying interception. And for the first time in quite some time, we've got ourselves a defensive nice hands catch of the game. Brought to you by Retroid. Put a Retroid handheld in your hands and play the only video game with your player in it. SFL 4K23. Marquise Reed, ladies and gentlemen. That's some beautiful stuff right there. Marquise Reed is 6'2", but he looked like he was about 7'2 on that play, just the way he went up for that INT. These teams want this bad. This is the best display of defensive football I've seen in quite a while. Now can the Vancouver offense respond in kind to their defense, who has made back-to-back -back interceptions on type attack? And now the offense gets back on the field. They were unable to convert on third down on the end of their drive. This little pitch play gains six yards, and that sets up a much better second down look for Vancouver. Other pitch play. Here comes Pravato looking for space. He turns inside. He's met by Doug Day and company, and it brings up third and one. Yeah, Mateo, just the big man there, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. And it gets this one close, third and down. And, and you mentioned these defensive interceptions, they're great, but your offense has to find a way to put points on the board. This drive seriously needs to continue here. Another run, Redford left side, and that's a first down for Robert Redford to move the chains for the Legion. He got just enough, and, you know, it's not been a very pretty day on the ground for Robert Redford or any of these halfbacks for that matter, but he got just enough, exactly what he needed right there, uh, to, to get that drive extended. On the last 14 plays, now 15 plays, 12 of them have been runs, and Nakai bounces Ooh. off a wimpy tackler and picks up five yards, and so it's a much different atmosphere and much different strategy here for Vancouver we're seeing a lot more running you had to wonder at some point in time if they wouldn't dip into the well and go to the ground game just to see what they could do I think that what their hope is is that they can start generating some momentum there in the trenches on the ground and open up the passing lanes for a big play heavy eye formation here as we hit the two minute mark in the third quarter quick pass over the middle oh. it is picked off how did that happen? A spectacular reception in and of itself. Matthias Citrion holds that in. Let's take another look. That's another candidate for a nice hands catch as well. Take a look at that. The big guy, 6'1", 245, uh, just getting right there all up in the face of and the, the sidelines of Christian Brown. And boy, I tell you what, how do you answer a defensive play um, of your own? You come up with... An INT, give it back to your team and neutralize the fact that Vancouver was not able to get any points at all off of those turnovers. First interception of the season for Matthias Citrion. He now has three in his four-season career. Now Seattle's offense back out of the field. Blue Scott on the pitch play is taken down by Mark Lopez after a gain of five. I really can't get over this defensive game that we're seeing. These offenses are doing everything that they can to move the football, and right now, neither defense is wanting to give an inch. It's been a, it's been a, a fun contest, that's for sure, but now we're getting down to it here, and you can tell these offenses are getting antsy. Somebody needs to do something here. Heavy blitz coming, but Tack just checks it down right side to Doyle. Oh. Doyle sneaks beyond. His defender gets to the 25-yard line. And that is another nicely converted first down. And that's huge right there because, of course, it's a great reception. And then take a look at this. We'll see to make sure that, yeah, uh, good job of staying in bounds by J.W. Goal and, and put them in the field goal range. And with the game, as we have seen today, how hard it is to get points on the board. They're at least in field goal position here. You know they want more, but even a field goal could make a huge difference in this game. First and 10 from the 24-yard line, Patak, back to pass again. Now just tucks it and runs through the middle, trying to spin Ooh. away. Gains nine yards before he is brought down by Stern. And it's second and short. 
you know, you always get worried when you see the quarterback there go into the spin cycle, if you will, and uh, and the two big defenders coming down on them. You, you worry about injury and, of course, the fumbles of that nature, but a good job of Patak just to hang on to the football there. And he just runs again. This time it's a QB designed sneak through the middle. First and goal, Seattle, and there is much better ball control from Seattle on this drive than the previous two. Definitely, and one of the things being the difference maker is the fact they've decided to be more conservative, keep the ball on the ground, and go to the, the short pass options as well out in the flats. You see, I think they are a little bit gun shy now to make the big throw after the INTs downfield deep uh, that happened uh, by Lopez and company. Final seconds of the third quarter ebbing away here in this one. Patak will fire, looking middle and looking for truth. Couldn't find him this time. Tried to thread the needle. The ball falls to the turf. You always have to keep it in the back of your mind that at some point in time in this perimeter of the field, you're going to see Top Attack go to the end zone looking for Polly Truth. That time the Vancouver defense did a great job of locking down. We'll see if that will continue here. Line spreads open on second and goal. Attack will again look to throw. Looking near sighted, no. but Truth turning and spinning. On his tiptoes, couldn't haul it in. The ball again falls down, and that ends the third quarter. Fourth quarter on its way. Does Seattle take the Pacific? Or does Vancouver have the final say? You're watching the SFL on YouTube. Stand by for station identification. Station of the Simulation Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or account of the game without the express written consent of the league office is prohibited. Welcome back to the final quarter in week 13. The winner of this one is either in the driver's seat if you're Vancouver or clinches the Pacific Division if you're Seattle. It's third and goal. Here for type attack. He rolls, looking near side. Now looking end zone. It is a good looking for truth. And again, it goes aside. A beautiful play from Lay. And the Vancouver defense again comes up in the clutch in the red zone. They did three straight times looking for Polly Truth. And three straight times this Vancouver defense did their job. And they held their ground. Now, obviously, we said three points is huge here to extend that drive, but there's a big difference between a field goal and what a touchdown could have meant in this game. I think Vancouver comes away with a victory on that one. This is just a 25-yard chip shot from Victor Ironleg. The kick is up, and it is good. Now a six-point lead for Seattle on the road against Vancouver, a team they have never defeated before in franchise history. APM Music is unrivaled music to bring your stories to life, inspiring every production with the world's most robust and constantly refreshed music collection, state-of-the-art technology, and world-class customer service. APM Music is the official soundtrack of the Simulation Football League. To explore their library and to find the perfect tracks for your projects, is it 8 p.m. music.com? And here comes the return from the Kai as he gets it all the way up to the 26 yard line. And now the pressure is on here, Cameron Duty. The pressure is on. They're down by six. Haven't scored a touchdown since the opening drive of the football game. And now here in the dire stretches, they could be nine minutes and 48 seconds away for seeing their division rivals take the Pacific Division once again, but this time on home soil. Yeah, huge moment here. Redford through the middle, only gains two. You know, it's interesting. You mentioned they went right down the field. They scored on the first drive. We talked about what a great job they did coming out of the gate. It's really interesting to mention. You saw the graphic, 68 yards, I believe it was, on that first drive and barely 100 yards since. And that's a telltale sign. They've got to kick it in gear here for this offense. And off trying to go through the middle, but the defense plugged every single hole. As it's tackled by Keenan. Another third down upcoming. Vancouver just barely converting over 50% at the moment. Yeah, I mean, I can't say that I like the decision to go ground two straight times there. I mean, you have to stay a little bit aggressive here. Don't get too conservative. Uh, you got to go through the air and not put yourself in third and longs. It's coming. 
CB4 with plenty of time, unloading, finds Nick Lockett, who is wide open, and he crosses midfield. That's great. We have seen them try to connect with Lockett on a couple of different uh, plays throughout this game. That is easily the best and the most wide open we've seen Nick Lockett the entire game. A huge play, and you've got to believe that that'll start to turn some momentum for this Legion team. Offset, single back behind Brown now as they cross midfield into Seattle territory for the first time in quite some time. Pass right side, double coverage. Ooh. Incomplete, a risky pass. Tended for a member of the Vancouver Legion wide receiving core, but falls incomplete. Just a nice job of Citrion there on the coverage and being able to blanket the intended target. Kind of scary there for a moment. I thought that had the potential to be a turnover. Second and 10 after the incompletion. This time they'll try and run with Redford right side. Gets out of one tackle, but is eventually brought down. After a gain of seven yards by Doug Day and TJ Frosties, the safeties combine, and it's third down again. I like the play call there, making it a much more manageable third and three, a good run by Redford, and now we'll see where they go to with their playbook here. They'll try and pass. Brown underneath, caught. Kendra Wells, her first reception. Now only the fourth receiver with a catch in the game for Vancouver, but it doesn't matter. The drive stays alive. The drive does stay alive, and that is huge. Kind of surprising that it took that long for Wales to get a reception in this game, but it couldn't have come at a more important time. Look at this. Empty backfield, as in wide receiver, that, including tight ends in that no number, as Brown just dumps it underneath for Brett Killian, who was going nowhere. Doug Day in the area takes down Killian for a loss of three. And, you know, that plays like that can derail a drive quickly, especially when the defense is playing, honestly, as lights out as Seattle has. We'll see if they can come back from it. Brown, only four-man rush, has time on Lowe's McMichaels inside the 20-yard line. Another crucial catch, and they are inside the red zone. Yeah, you know what? That is just great. I mean, what a great job. I mentioned they need to come back with something big here to um, to, to respond to that negative play, and they did just that. McMichaels, we've seen him come up with some important catches in this game. None more important than that, though. That does get him in the red zone here. This is the best we've seen Vancouver look since the opening drive. This is also the longest drive. Now tied with that scoring drive, which ended in nine plays. Eighth play, or ninth play of the drive is a run right side for Nakai, gains three, second and seven. This, partner, is the longest drive of the game for Vancouver, now at 10 plays. Seattle's longest drive is with 12. Yeah, uh, this is what they needed, something methodical here, and just enough opportunity to stay on the field long enough to put a good drive together. Run, Provado, nowhere. Blown up before the play, had a chance to develop. Great tackle on the outside by Bryant James. It's third down for the third time on the drive. And then more important than this, Tyler. Have to get beyond the nine yard line. Blitz coming from the outside, it's picked up. Pass caught oh. middle, near the two, then down at the one yard line. Brown connects with Lunar, and it's first and goal, Legion. Oh, you love to see it. Zoro Lunar with the Lunar Eclipse right there in the middle of the field. See what I did there, Tyler? Just a good job of uh, breaking open and uh, getting the much-needed play. Uh, that, that's exactly what this team has wanted this entire day. It's great stuff. You're predicting the future. That's that's what's happening Monday when Indy <laughs> rolls out their Eclipse uniforms on the Monday Night Whoa. Spectacular. First and goal, handoff, middle, oh. diving, touchdown, Bird Cooper! They retake the lead on a diving touchdown for Sawyer Stern, his third of the season. 
Sawyer Stern, exactly. Maybe the name we didn't expect him to go to. We're thinking Provado at that point. Let's take a look and make sure he did indeed get over the line. I think he did. A great job of, uh, you know, Seattle to try to come up and stop him, kind of thwart that offensive, uh, uh, that, that progression. But nevertheless, Vancouver responds and in a big way. This to for sure take the lead. Here comes chance to win. Snap spot, the laces were in, but it don't matter. Vancouver hold a slim one point lead. It's 14 to 13 here in this one. Meanwhile, back in Detroit, it is 17 to three. Denver, excuse me, this is in Denver, Colorado. It's 17 three, the Nightwings hold the lead at the moment. But meanwhile, here in this one, Pacific Division still up for grabs. Now, how does Seattle respond? They don't at the moment. Two wins, kickoff goes out of the back of the end zone. Tomorrow, the SFL Week 13 scramble for the playoffs continues with a marquee matchup between the top two teams of the league in Canton and Florida. Following that are two important games for four teams trying to be in the playoffs. A head-to-head -head between Houston and Arizona, as well as being Mexico City and Alamo City. All the action begins at 8, 5, 30 p.m. Eastern right here on SFL YouTube. The opening play of the drive goes nowhere. Baloo Scott taken down at the line of scrimmage by Drew Hamilton. I tell you, this is so important right here. You see the, the five-minute mark. Seattle are very capable of having a methodical drive. They could take the good portion of this last five minutes and get down the field and score if they play their car drive. Back dump off for Doyle, and he will plow forward for a gain of seven, and that'll bring up third down for Seattle. And now time does at some point. You know, it is a factor. It is on Seattle's side here. They have all the time in the world to work with, and it's going to be interesting to see how aggressive they want to be here or even if they want to move down the field quickly and risk the chance of getting Vancouver the ball back. Five-step drop attack looks underneath again, and that is caught. Dean Jackson, the fullback, picks up the first down yards easily as the coverage for Vancouver backed off expecting something deep. Yeah, exactly. That's what they were looking for. Instead, they drop it down in the flat and get just enough for the first down. This team, they look cool under pressure right now. Cool as cucumbers. Attack will look to roll. Looking middle, it is caught oh. the run. Holy truth to the 45-yard line. Nothing that Hamilton could do about it that time. No, the Hamilton was the last line of defense, if we're being honest. And, and a good job of Hamilton for just staying in there and bringing truth down to the ground because had he not, uh, he was pretty much gone. You see him breaking free right there. And a good job of truth again getting open. No surprise, it's in the middle of the field. But, man, sometimes even though you know where truth is going to be and where they're going to throw that football, you got to find a way to stop it. And that's easier said than done. Three wide on first down. This drive, a very good one for Seattle. They look to maybe put the final touches on this game. Under four minutes to play in regulation. Attack launches one over the oh. numbers. Caught at the 20-yard line. Fullerton has it. First and down, again, Seattle. A good job right here of Patak using all the different receivers. We've heard Fullerton. We've heard Truth. We've seen them throwing out of the backfield. Just whatever it takes to get the first down or keep the momentum going in the right direction. A masterful job at the moment by Ty Patak. A dart from Patak to Fullerton. Offset eye behind him now on first down. He's rolling, throws off his back foot, caught by Fullerton again at the six yard line. Lopez there to bring him down, but it's first and goal from the six. They really uh, turned up the urgency. Uh, it looked like they were being very methodical there for a while, and now they've just started taking some deep shots. Take a look at that athletic uh, one-foot throw right there, throwing off his back foot by Patak. And again, finding Fullerton, who is becoming a hot commodity at the end of this ballgame. 16 different players have caught a pass in this game tonight. The spreading of the wealth is for real, but now who do Seattle trust? to get them into pay dirt. Handoff, middle, blue Scott, nothing doing. Only a gain of maybe two as the tackle is made by Marquise Reed. 
man, and you start to look at this from the, the Vancouver defensive side here, wanting to keep Seattle out of the end zone, keep this a, if, if possible, a, a field goal game. That is their priority right now. That's what they're looking for. If they can't get the turnover, they just want to hold them to three. Three straight drives. Vancouver has stopped Seattle in the red zone. They try and run with Doyle, and Doyle's denied again. Bornsey there on the stop. It's third and goal at the four. Yeah, and this is crucial right here. It'll be interesting to see. We expect them to get the playoff and not let it go down to the two-minute warning. But I would consider just thinking this one over, letting it run down, but looks like they're going to line up in formation. Might they let this go to the two-minute warning? Or will we see them try and punch it in here? And they will wow. let it go to the two-minute warning. A dramatic conclusion to the Pacific Division is on the horizon. What happens? Who takes it home? Who wants it more? This is week 13 of season 22 of the SFL. Don't you dare tab out. Tyler Fall, camera duty on the call. Third and goal for Seattle. They're down by one. Blitz coming past middle. It is dropped in the end zone it is dropped by wow. ben harrison fourth and goal vancouver hold again they sure do take a look at that good coverage lopez right there you know the contact right off the line that's that they're just letting him play and then at the end of it uh, not able to turn around and harrison not able to snag that one there was enough interference that they're clean interference of course nothing you know that would cause a flag but a great job of disruption by lopez that would cause the incompletion. 20 yards out for Victor Iron Leg to retake the lead. It's a low snap, but corralled, and the pick is up and good. Seattle retake the lead. It's only a two-point lead. A field goal from Vancouver would win it. It's, it's going to be a wild one minute, 55 second ride to the finish. Yep, here you go, Vancouver. Can you do it? Can you move the ball down the field like you did the last time? and uh, get yourself at least in field goal position. I can't wait to see. The kick is on its way from Iron Leg, and the return will not be taken out of the end zone. Nakai will take a knee in his own end zone. So out comes Christian Brown, who has completed just over 60% of his passes today. He's thrown a touchdown, but he's also thrown two interceptions, but he's also thrown four passes in a row, back to back to back to back, four completions. He's going to have to channel that little extra energy and continue that to get Vancouver down the field. He has a minute 54 to do it. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. Christian Brown is under center with a bunch off to his left. Five-man rush. Brown rolls. Firing across his body. It is caught on the run by Luder to midfield. And that's the dream start for Vancouver on the drive. Sure is. You know they needed that. They needed a chunk play if they could get it to get them close to field goal range, because that's what we're looking at. We're looking at field goal range and a target right now of where they could get chance to win, to give them the chance to win. And that's a good start. Gets them out to midfield, and now they can kind of open up a different part of their playbook that they weren't able to probably go to back there around the 20-yard line. That was a huge play. They only need 20 yards, but they also don't want to give the ball back to Seattle. Brown, right side oh. deflected by Doug Day. An athletic play, a brilliant play, stops the clock and stops the momentum. You can feel just how much these two teams want this victory. Doug Day doing everything he can just to be near the football, to get a couple of fingers up, to deflect it, to make it a wayward pass, and he did just that. Great play. Three wide for Brown. Be a delayed handoff. Redford trying to sneak through his offensive line. Straw trying to push the pile forward. He pushes TJ Frosty for a gain of eight. It's third and two, just about a minute to go. Yeah, and a big third and two. And you know as well as I do, this is four down territory if for some reason they don't make it. But you've got to believe right here they've got something nice drawn up just to get this short yardage. 3-2 dime look as the coverage backs off. It's just going to be a run, a good run. Oh. Bravado charges forward to the 33-yard line, just on the outskirts of field goal range. Under a minute to go now. 
Yeah, you start to, you're starting to feel it here, Tyler. The awareness they they know where they have to get, and that is priority number one. Give chance to win, a chance to win. If there's nothing downfield, just gotta protect that football. And for the longest time, Vancouver in their franchise Ooh. history went without a kicker. Fear just due to how they wanted to build their roster. They felt that not having a kicker wouldn't matter. It cost them games in their past. But now, here when a division is on the line, 20 seconds and ticking to go. Do they get into chance to win range? Cannot take a sack. Brown looking near side caught, turning up field is locked. Under is. 10 seconds to go. Stiff arm, and he gets out of bounds inside the 23 yard line. First and 10 with eight ticks to go. And you know what? I love that play call, Tyler, because we hadn't seen much of that this entire game. And look at Lockett, just aware of, of, of knowing how important every single yard is. Again, I like the, the play design out in the flat like that, then turning up field, the stiff arm, and then running as hard as they can, you know, out of bounds. They're chasing Nick Lockett to the sidelines. That was a beautiful play. Ah, oh, can't hardly breathe. This is so exciting. Oh, this is giving me shades of Mexico City. When they threw an interception, when they're in field goal range, with just under seconds to go, don't do anything crazy. Brown will look to pass, looking middle, cut by oh. Kendra Wells at the five. Timeout with three seconds to go. What a brilliant pass, a brilliant catch, and Vancouver can win the game here. Faith in your quarterback. You know that Christian Brown has had difficulty staying protected and not turning over the football, but you trust in the guy that you have made your starter for four years to come up with the play, and Kendra Wells. Wow, how about that? From 22 yards out to win the game and keep the Pacific Division up in the air. It's up, and it's gone! Vancouver control the Pacific Division. A win next week gives them the division, but they deny Seattle the chance to do it on their own. What an incredible final drive from Christian Brown, and it's gone final. 17-16 Legion win. Tyler, where do we begin, my friend? What a game. Have you ever? <laughs> incredible stuff uh, let's just go ahead and say this both of these teams played their hearts out that's one of the best football games that I've had the privilege to call here in the SFL and it is uh, a testament to both of these teams just how the determination the will to win how important this was to their season Vancouver we talked about them the offense was sluggish a big middle portion of the game they had a 60 yard drive they went three more quarters and only had 100 yards total then they come back at the end they find that extra gear and they make it happen their defense kept them in the game this entire time and you take a look at Christian Brown who in the end played a phenomenal football game made the right choices looking for the right the, uh, the the right receivers excuse me and a good time management there when they had just a little bit of time left to work with to move the ball down the field that's why Christian Brown I'm going to give him my player of the game that was huge congratulations Vancouver and good game Seattle he was three of four on the last drive alone. All three passing attempts went for longer than 10 yards. The first one, the most important, catches. Zora Lerner for a 30-yard pass to begin the drive and ends it with a Kendra Wells 18-yard reception to set up the game-winning field goal for chance to win. Four straight wins for Vancouver over Seattle, and here's what this means. Vancouver control the Pacific Division destiny. A win next week when they take on their opponents in the, I apologize, they'll take on Mexico City right here in the Delta Dome. If they beat them, the Pacific Division go, comes back to Vancouver for the first time in two seasons. If Vancouver lose, Seattle must beat Portland in order for them to claim the Pacific Division title. What a week 14 we've got in store for this to Division. The final division of this season is not done yet. Stay tuned for more football tomorrow night starting at 5.30 p.m. Eastern right here on SFL YouTube. And stay tuned for whenever these two games are scheduled because it'll be must-watch television. For Ron Haynes, for Cameron Duty, and for James Walters, and for Cameron Irvine, I've been Tyler Falk. 
Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. And until then, folks, good morning, good afternoon, and good night.